Painting paper is my happy place, and it's where I get to explore and play just like when I was a very small child. Just moving my hands around paper with paints and with, with all sorts of tools and such, it brings me alive in a way that very few other activities do. And I wanna share that process with you. So let's get busy. Let me show you what I'm gonna work on today. I'm using really bright colors today. I love these colors. Uh, they look beautiful together. They blend well together. I can get really high, hot tones and some nice muted tones, which makes for these amazing papers. It does start with the paper though. So I'm gonna grab some rice paper, um, some copy paper and my favorite newsprint. And the reason that I love the newsprint is because if I mess up, if I don't like something that I'm exploring, I have no problem just getting rid of it. Okay, as I get ready to start, I'm going to put the colors all out on my palette, just in their pure raw form, so I can see what I start with. of the hand I'm going to uh, just create one piece of paper that has uh, each color on it not mixed but layered and this can become a unifying piece later on. A question that I get frequently is why I paint paper? Like, why don't you paint a painting? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And those questions are actually the reason why I paint paper. And that is, it feel, when I paint paper, it feels like possibility to me or freedom or mystery even getting out of my head and allowing my creative nature just to come out organically. I never know when I start a piece of paper what it's going to look like at the end. It's relaxing, it's permissive, and it's maybe the only area of my life where I do not feel judged even by myself. When I go to use these papers later on, several days from now or whenever they get used, um, there is some cohesion between the different papers that I painted today. So you may be looking at this saying, oh my god, are you crazy? You've got these teals and greens and yellows and then you're putting that bright red on top of it. Well, yes, because that bright red, that uh, primary magenta is what it's called, is part of all the pieces that I'll be creating today in some way. It'll be nice to have each of the individual colors represented so that there's also another sense of history and that would be the color history. I try to be conscious when I'm in a painting session not to use the exact same tools in the exact same order on every piece that I'm painting. That would be too much uniformity and where's the mystery in that? Where's the fun in that? This tool here, the Catalyst Wedge, is just about my favorite tool that I use when painting papers. And the reason is, is the incredible versatility that I get and use of. So what I mean is, as you can see, it really moves paint all around the paper and in very unpredictable ways. But the really nice thing about it is that when you drag it across the paper, it creates translucency in any paint that you use, whether it's a very opaque paint or if it's naturally translucent. The Catalyst Wedge magnifies that by pushing 
paint into the areas that yet have not yet been painted and creating that look of texture. I don't know if you can tell here, but uh, to me that is absolutely gorgeous texture. And the thing that adds to it is you can see through all the layers that have gone down already. So there's this whole story that's coming out of this paper being created. Now, you don't have to use a catalyst wedge. You could use a credit card or an old hotel room key, something of that nature uh, to move the paint around. Uh, it won't look exactly the same, but it will be very similar. If you decide that you want to start painting paper, whether it's just as a hobby or you're an established artist and you just want to take a break, I really encourage you to use whatever you have around you. This paper here came from packaging like Amazon or, or something, and I've just collected it over the years. And I take it out of the box, I flatten it out, and then I roll it all up. And so that I always have something to paint on. Now, I do have a large collection of papers, which you've already seen, but I love using the organic, not necessarily made for painting papers, like this piece of packaging paper. I'm thinking about using these papers that I'm making today in my tiny art journal. I have an itty bitty art journal that I love to, uh, I love to use as just exploration. If you want to see me use my tiny art journal and the papers I'm creating today, give me a thumbs up and I will create that. I will actually do it as a video and post it here so you can, you can see how I use some of these papers. I love the way this is blending out. Uh, as I add to the layers on it, I'm really liking what's happening, and I think it'll be exciting to see <laughs> what that gets used on. Okay, books are by far my favorite surface to paint on. Now, I know some of you are going to freak out about that. Just trust me, these are old books that have been saved from the landfill. Uh, some of them are my own books. Some of them are books like this one here is actually a Swedish book. I have, I don't speak Swedish. I don't know what it says or what this book is about, but I found it at uh, the little store in my local library that uh, sells, you know, old books to raise money for reading programs. So I got this beautiful book here uh, for, I think it was $5. And uh, each page that I paint in it is just a joy to look at. I want to get to the point with these books that I have so many that I can just grab any given book one night while having a glass of wine and just page through the book as if reading, but what I'm reading is the art and the art of a specific time in my life or in a specific situation. I love that. So I love the idea of that. I'm working towards it. Uh, <laughs> it takes a long time to fill up a book. There is no part of the process of painting paper that I don't enjoy, and that includes when I'm finishing up from any given painting session. Here, as you can see, I've got this gorgeous palette with these beautiful colors, and I'm just moving the paint around the palette paper. This is definitely a piece of paper that I'm going to save and utilize for something. These colors are absolutely gorgeous, and as I'm blending them out with the catalyst, it's getting better and better. And then this here is just another piece of that packing paper, and I used it to press down onto the palette paper just to get any remaining big chunks of paint off. Taking the emphasis off of creating art and just painting paper for the sake of painting paper, for its joy, for its exploration and its mystery, 
has truly become one of my favorite ways to spend time. I hope you'll explore this hobby too.